it's weird, but hey, you, hey, you, oh. come on, sit down. You're sitting at the grown ups table. I'm your host, Jesse Pimpinella. And as always, my partner in crime, John Jacobs. And <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> I thought he was about to hit on me. No, was like, that's what I thought. Partner in crime. That's what I thought. I was like, what are you doing? The old, oh, uh, hey, we only have October 1st is only a month away. We got a lot of room for OnlyFans. Let's do this. But they reversed that. But Let's they talk reversed about it. it. They, they realized reversed they can't it. make money Great without God. porn, so they reversed it. It's hilarious. They reversed it. They were like, that's where the money is. Yeah. I got to I gotta pay my rent. I don't know what they're going to do. Like, <laughs> right. I, gotta, I got bills to pay. Like, this ain't is going to pay for itself, okay? So this is our <laughs> guest, Kai Bernetti. So when I'm, not, when I'm not podcasting with John, I'm doing stand-up with Ty Bernetti. Uh, quick little backstory, Ty Bernetti and I – uh, I, I met him when I first got to Columbus, and he introduced me to the comedy scene here, and we've been working a lot together. So I was glad to have, like, my first and my second wife on this show yeah. uh, at the same time. And my literal wife, too, at one point was on this yeah, show. I was going to say, you've got, like, three wives now, it, so it's, it's, it's going to get messy. It's going to get messy. What can we say? Hey, you got to share it's, me. It's like Big Love with uh, uh, Bill Paxton, man. Only it's like one real wife and like two dudes that are kind of like your wife. Exactly. Yeah. Um, that means you guys are the dudes. <laughs> yeah. That's, well, yeah. Right. That's the only part of the metaphor I approved of. I was like, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not one, I'm not married to Jesse. And if I am, I'm not the wife. Okay. <laughs> Look at Chad talking shit already. I love it. Everybody talks <laughs> shit on me. I'm fucking used to that. Shit. I was at his house last night, and even his wife was like, "I'm the breadwinner. He does what I say." And I was like, "Oh, like, all right." Like I know where Jesse gets it in his life. He's sure. always, you know, second fiddle. It's great. Everybody. Yep. But let's uh, real quick just want to say shout out. Make sure you like and subscribe to these videos. We're always going live. We basically have these videos come out. On Thursday on YouTube, like and subscribe, them, share them to your friends. The more you spread the love, the more we spread into the algorithm, and everybody gets to know us. And it's always a party on the airwaves. So make sure you do that. But for today, we're going to be doing something very interesting. John, this was your idea. I, w- I want you to explain because this is this is a, I like this because okay. for somebody who suffers from anxiety, I have this about life in general. So. <laughs> Reevaluating your poor decisions on how they every come out day, <laughs> every day I'm reevaluating my life. I'm like, oh, you know, what if when I slip down the stairs, what if I had to grab the handrail? Maybe the back of my head wouldn't be flat like it is. You know what I mean? It's like look, your, your head's not flat, man. Okay, we're doing bony tricks now. I got you. You want me to get some clubs out so I can juggle them to some carnival music? This is. The show went down the hill. It's just us doing did. pop and can tricks now. Yeah, yeah. You, you've <laughs> ruined it. You've soured it. Already you did. <laughs> Do the Ted's beard. Just tell us he can't grow one. Um, see, the thing about a nice beard is you use oil and you pamper it. No, it does it just no, if you're a man, it just doesn't tickle. Uh unless you want to put it on somebody else's armpit, then it tickles a lot. Mm. You tickle, you grab your chin and you tickle. You say, Hey, you hey, you guy at the bar. You, you come a little close and you tickle him. And I, then he buys you a drink. I regret being in the room. Right. Right. That's how I met Jesse. Jesse. Yeah, there's you know how many drinks he bought me that night? When I went up and I tickled him. He did tickle me. I was like, hey, Jesse. What? Jesse, what's that over there? And I'll tickle him. Oh, wow. And that he bought really me so many Bud bad. Lights because I'm a classy lady. Um, but hey, anyways, hey, let's, Bud Light, it's better than Bush Light. Come on now. Got standards. <laughs> It's made with real hops or whatever. I don't know, but that's what. Hey, I hate to do this on the live show, but my cat's begging to get in here, so I need to open the door and let him in, guys. I'm so sorry for this. No, this is animal friendly show, of course. I'm allergic to cats. Can you keep it away? Actually, (laughs) I don't. I don't even approve of it on video. All right, so so sorry, guys. I I share my home office with my cat, and apparently he decided he needed to uh, take care of his business during the live show. Apologize about that, folks. You're you're all good. So, John, lay into it. What is the what if Wednesday we are doing for today? Yeah. So I, I, you know, obviously I ripped it off from Marvel from their new series What If because I thought that was a really cool idea and. As we were talking about different ideas for the show, I was just like, 
why don't we just do a what if show about the shit that we talk about all week long, which is we talk about movies and TV shows, how they could have been better, where the story could have gone better or what was bad and how it could have gone worse or, or whatever it is. And I'm thinking to myself, why don't we just make this into a show and have some fun? So exactly. we, uh, we each picked a film that we wanted to do a little, what if the ending happened this way type thing. And then we opened it up to our fans and to our subscribers and said, Hey, what do you guys want to see? We got a great collection of some suggestions and we're going to go over as many of those as we can in the show today. And we're going to give everybody a shout out who submitted. So that's really what it is. We're doing what if your favorite film ended this way instead of the way that it ended. Again, we got some great submissions, and I'm really excited to get started. Real quick, though, shout out to Phil Moore, who's checking out the show. Thanks, Phil. Appreciate it. Oh, Phil. Oh, my God. That's all. It's, it's always a pleasure when Phil joins us. Of course it is. Phil's Can't a busy man, so anytime he can check out the show is just great. So I appreciate you watching. Phil, thank you. All right, so let's, why are we, so what, oh, there he is, there's, what's there up? There he is, what's up, Phil? What's so, up? All right, let's get, let's get right into it. Let's, uh, so we, so we have our movies that we're going to talk about today, but we have a couple of uh, guest films uh, that people suggested from uh, previous comments this week. So I thought would be really cool is we do maybe two from the audience, one from us, two from the audience, one from us, nice little format yeah, way. Yeah, sure. So let's start off with, with, John and I almost got into a quick fight about James Cameron. So what better way to start this show than with a James Cameron-related question? Keith Workman, what? this is your submission, Keith. Thank you so much, Keith. You rock. Now, and Keith, if you're watching, comment and tell us what you think would happen, but we'll tell you what we think. So the question is, what if the Terminator killed Sarah Connor. I'm burping. That's that's all. I'm just staying far away. Also, yeah. the hand motions. He's just fanning it at me. I know. It's like like it's like. But what if uh, Terminator killed Sarah? So I will let you go, John, because oh. you are the name. You because you are the name of the technological savior <laughs> from the movie. And there we go. You know, I like to think if I exist in the Terminator universe, I could totally be John Connor. But let's be real, I wouldn't. Uh, you know, I actually have no. Give yourself some credit. You know what you would do? You would you? Here's how you would defeat the robots because I know oh, you so well. You would ask the robots a paradoxical question that they yes. can't answer, and yeah. they just all shut down. But wait, so <laughs> that's, that's actually really done. funny because that brings up the number one problem with Terminator, and it starts with the first film: is that it's already impossible. OK, you can't send somebody from the future to the past to impregnate a woman to give birth to a child that already exists, because in the original very, very first timeline before they started fucking everything up, that child would have been somebody completely different, not born of somebody from the future. So this this movie franchise already cannot happen, but we're going to pretend that that doesn't you know, matter. And we're just going to go in with what happens if the Terminator kills Sarah Connor. It's really... Just, look, I just think her eggs have super dominant genes, okay? And it didn't matter what guy knocked her up, okay? okay. <laughs> That's all it is. No, 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 Ty. Like, no, she no, no, had no, some Ty. super eggs. Well, hold on. And, like, so, like, she just needed a sperm. Really, it didn't matter whose. It could have been a janitor. Same kid. So, okay, so let's go with that. So Sarah Connor in the very, very, very first timeline, the original timeline before the future even happened, which is already impossible to begin with. Uh, yep. I mean, granted, we don't subscribe to many world theories, alternate universes, you know, tangents, that type of thing, which completely different discussion. So her super eggs form child number one. And yep. then the future happens. And then so child number one is like, hey, I'm not good enough because it was only super eggs, yeah. Ooh, super eggs and super sperm. So yeah. Kyle Reese, you're super sperm guy. You go back in the past, fuck my mom, create an entirely new child. <laughs> I will cease to exist. And that new child will then come into this future and be the leader of the human resistance and go. Yep. But also, Darth said it, and like this is what I thought immediately. But uh, basically, nothing changes because yeah. like you're gonna have somebody else be a leader. Yeah. Like yeah. we're the human race. Somebody right. is always gonna be like, "Hey, you guys should like follow me because I think I know how to stop stuff." 
Like we know the right. internet. We've seen so many right. people be like, you should listen to what I say about anything because I'm the smart one. <laughs> right. And I will lead us to, to the promised land. And so there's somebody else would have just been, you Absolutely. know, trying to lead people and if it wasn't yeah. General Patton, it would have been General Smith. It, it does, it's irrelevant. But the person is still relevant because the charismatic ability of the person, their ability to lead, all of that. And John Connor was all these things because his mom trained him. But again, that couldn't happen until we fucked up the original timeline. But let's go back and talk about what happens when he kills Sarah Connor. He shoots that bitch in the head. She's out for the count. Skynet happens. Everything happens. And then to Ty's point... Billy ascends the throne and he decides to be the resistance leader. But here's the kicker. Billy is a better leader than John Connor. And Billy says, hey, we just need 100 humans to go sacrifice themselves as kamikazes and we'll blow all that shit up and it won't exist anymore. So they send their 100 kamikazes over to Skynet corporate headquarters. They blow everything the fuck up, including the time machine. And now they just go to the Vietnam style where they didn't just go to the little pockets of the machines left and just slowly wipe them out until the humans win. What I love about your theory is that you think that, like, with Skynet being in America, that we would be so selfless to kamikaze ourselves. We'd be like, no, no, Billy, listen to me. I think there's another way that we can do this where we can really continue on the human race. Because, like, without us, what are you, you going to do with the human race? So, like, long- let's not do that. It would be the longest scene ever in Armageddon where they had to pull straws to see who stands behind for the uh, to blow up the uh, asteroid, that times a hundred. It's gonna be a long oh, day. Oh. <laughs> That's a lot, man. We have a bunch of straws. All right, everybody, <laughs> everybody. And then you got the one guy. It's like, look at that. It's a nano. It's a nano inch off. I'm not going. <laughs> not happening. Nope. I'm not good. happening. Yeah, because let's face it, they weren't all like super soldiers or something. No, like, they weren't. The ones who survived and are in John Connor's army, they're all just like they're people that John was like. Dude, can you use a gun? Yeah, here we can. Go. 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 Well, now Kyle Reese did say, yep, Nigel's absolutely right. Just fucking up timelines. That's why we are where we are now. Somebody from the future time traveled. They fucked up. They went back and they're like, oh shit, I got to fix this. They came back and then really fucked it up. Thanks, future time traveler who fucked everything up for us. I appreciate it. Let's blame COVID, all that shit on future time travelers. It's their fault. This will be the last thing I say, but I just love that. And I'm going to evoke this movie, Terminator uh, Salvations. John Connor had one of the best podcasts going on at that time. <laughs> he sure <laughs> did, man. He's on every night. Him. If you see this robot, here's how you kill him. <laughs> and it was like a true crime. I love it. <laughs> but it was intentional. <laughs> He let people know how to do it. Like, no, you got to get in here and disconnect this servo, and then you're good. It's a DIY podcast. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. Perfect. That's all they had. That's all they had. You know, Michael Ironside was on that sub. He was getting tired, you know. So mm-hmm. John Connor's bored, man. He's got to figure out shit to do in between fighting the machines. Yeah. All right. So any closing thoughts on Terminator? Uh, no, I mean, look, I love the Terminator franchise. <sighs> Even Genesis, but only because my man Jai Courtney was in that. That movie's a fucking wreck, but Jai Courtney saves it. Uh, yeah. Don't care what anybody says. That's a true statement. But, uh, you know, look, T2, uh, T1 and T2 are still the best. They're always going to be the best. They're phenomenal films. We love them. And even though they are insanely, ridiculously inaccurate, uh, I don't care because I really, really enjoy them. So. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. So let's talk about another movie that went on. Josh. For a while. I Josh also don't need any closing time. <laughs> What's up, Josh? You had it really you, I'm just sitting next to you. It's fine. You so, ranted, yeah, let's go with this one. Ranted, okay, no, it's fine. It's fine. No, no, it's fine. It's great. It's fine. That's why I'm here is to not say things. I'm going to record it out. Great. That's fine. We had time to look pretty it's in fine. the background. I'm going to quarterback this. Watch this. Oh, what if the wet bandits were caught? Uh, what if the wet bandits caught Kevin? Take it away, Ty. Oh, obviously, satanic Christmas ritual. <laughs> <laughs> like, they, everybody saw that. Like, that's what we're all thinking, right? Nobody's like, oh, yeah, they just murder him. They're like, no, you put us through some shit. We, tonight we sacrifice for Satan. Like, that's. It's a little Manson y. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it was in the. That was in vogue at the time. That's what people wanted. So, Ty, I have a question for you. 
who brought who into the Satanism? Was it Harry that brought Mark or Mark that brought Harry? Because not both of them weren't into it. One of them no, brought no. the other one into it. No, Joe Pesci's character, I forget his name. That would be uh, Harry. Harry, Harry. Okay, Harry obviously is going to be like, look, man, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're successful. I don't do a good, any accent, really. But he tells him, like, hey, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to be successful. We just sacrifice the children we find while robbing places, and then Satan will help us steal more stuff. Because, obviously, they're not looking to the Lord for help, you know? And while I don't want to agree with you, this does hold a little bit water for two reasons. Number one, they do have a ritual, which is to flood the house when they leave. All right? That's just what the hell. That's their calling card. <laughs> That's their calling card. But number two... Number two, they have they have like their own little like uh, their little uh, like club saying crowbars up. <laughs> you know what I mean, it's like that's like their so, yeah. I have a question for Ty going kind of into this. So at the end, when we think the wet bandits do catch Kevin, or I'm sorry, it was actually right before that. It was when they were walking up the stairs after getting hit with the paint cans and falling on the floor, which again would never happen in real life. They would be dead. But anyways, mm-hmm. he's like, <laughs> he's like, you hit me with one more paint can, kid, and I'm going to snap off your cojones and boil them in motor oil. Ty, in your ending... Do we get that scene where Joe Pesci is literally grabbing 10-year-old Kevin McAllister's scrotum, slices it off, puts it in motor oil on the stove, and boils it in front of him as he bleeds out? I mean, obviously, that's just the start of the satanic ritual. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't see, like, you guys are laughing. This is obviously what they're doing. This is, like, this is the start. Like, if you just, you know, you listen... To uh oh my gosh, who's the crazy guy who uh, rants on other on radio and stuff? Alex Jones. Al- if you just listen to Alex yeah. Jones, he's got a whole podcast on this, you know, on how they start sacrificing the children. And Joe Pesci, Harry would have just followed it to the T, you know. I think that's really that's that's I, what it's all about. I could see I could see Harry being a Alex Jones fan if he. And we didn't oh, absolutely, to absolutely. absolutely. Marv, no way. But Harry, absolutely. He's got that gold tooth that tings every time he smiles. Like, <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, Josh actually has some comments about uh, okay. his topic. So let's throw those up there. What's he got? I oh, think, they uh, want to bring business and Kevin overthrows Harry and Marv. Interesting. So what would that do for the McAllister family? They're obviously a rich, well-off family. Do you think Peter McAllister is going to tolerate his son doing that? I, You know what? I, I think they're, they're going to use the McAllister fortune to bankroll this operation. You know, you know what's better than having a million dollars? Having two million dollars. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yeah, it's called reinvesting. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think I think we could have had a bunch of crime caper movies. I, I think I would be pretty awesome. I think they would have started using their money to bail him out of jail a lot. Oh, that would be pretty good. Yeah, like he would just never stay in jail. He, oh, there you go, Brian. Yeah, we don't actually hear what Peter McAllister's profession is. We know they wear Rolexes. We know they they don't drive nice cars, but they live in a mansion. So it's very confusing trying to figure out the careers of these parents. I don't know what Kevin's mother does. I, she doesn't seem like a stay-at-home mom, so I'm I'm not really sure. God, it's, I there's the money laundering. Mob boss. Yeah. Oh my God, now it's blowing up. All right. So Kevin would convince Marv to turn on Harry's or Joe Pesci's character, and boom, Kevin Marv. <laughs> that, that sounds oh, nice. Like a little... That's right. Perfect. Like, wow, the they're just like best friends. Can't keep up. Uh, hey, so real quick, guys, uh, Phil actually gave me a really good suggestion. I'm going to keep this close to the chest, and we'll cover this uh, in a little bit when we go back to crowdsourcing. I can't believe nobody brought this one up. Like, it, it's blowing my mind that none of us thought about this. It's the easiest one. It really is. So uh, I'll share that with you guys here in a little bit. Um, uh, real quick, so again, on the McAllister thing, so now we go to Home Alone 2, where we're reunited with Marv and Harry, and Kevin increases his sadism up like tenfold by throwing <laughs> bricks in people's faces, wrenches on, literally exploding people, and they don't die. Like, I think one guy fell like four stories on his face and didn't break his neck. Like, 
this is insane. So what is Kevin really telling us? Is he a disturbed child or is he just really, really good at creating the world's best Rube Goldberg experiment? <laughs> I think, I think he is uh, a student of Jigsaw. The jigsaw killer. Whoa. I was gonna say, like, he's right. obviously a serial killer. Yeah. He's a serial killer. I mean, obviously, you'll good get this. One. You're not just randomly this good at maiming and hurting people for no reasons. I think. I, agree. I think he's just a much more mainstream, family friendly serial killer that we put up with because he uses it for good. Well, and I bet, like, he's got all those siblings. He's obviously been practicing, right. and that's why they all like don't like him that much there you go that's why they're like it's fine if we leave you behind because this is the kid who tries to throw paint cans on my face <laughs> like oh you're gonna get left behind on christmas sucks to be you stop throwing cape pants or paint cans at me. <laughs> like that's it you almost got me hands i was intrigued by that for a moment cape pans i was like no, cake pans? That's wrong. That's oh, what I'm even better, escape rooms where you could actually die if you don't escape. Excellent suggestion, Desiree. Perfect. I mean, really, I mean, all of those traps eventually do turn into escape rooms. I mean, the people, instead of being trapped by four walls, they're trapped by their desire to steal or kill Kevin. So, I mean, really, I mean, it's just... Uh, it's or really, sacrifice or him to the dark lord. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Comment real quick. We're going to take this a step further. Check this out. It's the Jigsaw origin story. Dude, Ooh. Jigsaw is Kevin McAllister. This is why he's so pissed off. It's not that his wife lost her child or that he had cancer that no one was willing to cure. It's because of this damage from his childhood by these local goons. It's it. Oh, my That's God. It. I love or, how that was all connected. Beautiful. Or it's still connected, but he just had so much practice from doing this as a child. There it is. That when he had that future trauma, he was like, I've got this old skill set just waiting in my back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> and the tour right. told me to not hide this in a bushel basket. <laughs> I'm going to go out there and be somebody. I'm going to be somebody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. It's really awful when you say really dark stuff that's in a very Pixar and Disney happy. I don't know what you're <laughs> talking about. Like it's, It scares me. And that's one thing about our friendship that's always scared me. But all right, so let's wrap up on. Um, so yeah, oh, Ted, that, exactly. What if he became the jigsaw killer? There it That's is. What we're there it is. I think so. Let's jump on to our next topic. So let's. Uh, right now, we're going to do one of our own for this one. Uh, so let's. We'll let's jump to our guest, Ty. Ty. So yours is. What if the buildings did not blow up in Fight Club at the end? So I'll explain this a little bit. In the book, what happens is like a lot of the things that have happened in the movie, but he escapes coming off the bus uh, where they're trying to get his balls because they use the rubber band. They're going to do the vasectomy and they're talking about like, so what's the best time? Oh, I heard somebody got like 18 seconds over in Oregon. Like they're just like doing that. He goes into the building. He fights with Tyler Durden, which is really himself. Ooh, spoiler. Um, <laughs> when he gets up to the top of the building, after he's deactivated the bomb in his building, he shoots himself in the cheek. In the book, he actually has a scar on this side from fighting. He has a hole in one cheek, and then he shoots himself. He gets a hole in the other, and he has this jig, like jack or jack o' lantern smile. They talk about, and none of the other buildings blow up. And then in the book, he actually ends up in a mental hospital where a bunch of the people working there are saying things like, "We're waiting for you, Tyler Durden." Oh, oh, we're God. waiting on I, 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 <laughs> Yeah, And it's, uh, it's real different. Uh, but so I want to know where, where do you think that would go? If And also, the credit building's blowing up, and he says, like, the debt goes back to zero. <laughs> like, does anything actually change? It seems like nothing would change in that original ending where it's like nothing really cool happened. It's just there's like, oh. record. <laughs> yeah, there's record. I think, I think it was more of a symbolic thing. Uh, for me, that's what it always – that ending was mainly symbolic and seeing those buildings go down because these buildings are kind of like, I mean, the, the buildings themselves, just like everything in that movie is material material. It has this like incredible worth to everybody, you know, and seeing the buildings go down. I think that was what the message was to see these physical giants, these something almost we treat as, you know, a God fall. So I don't know. That's, that's what I got from it. Mm, but Bob died. Yes. He, he died for symbolism? 
I, I mean, do you think Tyler Jordan was right in the head? Well, I think Tyler Jordan was right in the head. I, I, I don't think <laughs> I don't think his human guy was right in the head. I think Tyler Jordan was the straightest player in that entire movie. I, I'm done. I'm done. I know. I, I know. As soon as I said that, I knew it. That's I knew what it. most. So, like, I knew it. That's what's interesting is Tyler Jordan is um, the symbol of like hyper masculinity at the time. Um, and like that was what Chuck was, like wrote that book about, and it talks about like how materialism is like bullshit. So like yeah. the main character is just like he thinks like he'll be happy if he has things, and he's not. Yeah. And then Tyler Durden comes along and is like, self improvement is masturbation, and he's like, self destruction is enlightenment. And yeah. so they're all about anarchy and destroying right. shit. And Robert Paulson died because they were doing. I think they were just graffitiing something. I, I can't remember this. Well, the, it was the two for one. Remember, it was to just Starbucks. destroy the sculpture and then take out the Starbucks, not call to Starbucks. Right. Yeah, they actually have like a Starbucks cup in every single scene. Um, but yeah, so that happened. That that was specifically materialism and anarchy and trying to take like just blow, blow stuff down. But okay, ending wise, yeah. What would be different? Like, how would you have liked to have seen that movie end? Do you think he goes on and just after killing Tyler Durden, this self conscious part of him, does he then become the leader of these people still? Does he go to this mental? Like, what would you rather see I, from this ending? I, I keep it brief. I think two either two things could happen. Number one, um, the two personalities merge and create something new. Um, that, that's what, no, I'm just saying it's one thing, but what I actually feel most strongly about is that him going to the mental hospital where they're like, we've been waiting for you, Tyler Durden. I think Tyler Durden had a backup plan in case if somehow the protagonist beats him. I think there was always a, a backup plan. He seems too ingenious and smart to just leave it up to chance. Maybe. Um, I, th I think in my ending, you know, it still happens. The, the buildings still fall. And then he's like, Marla, you met me at a weird time in my life. And then after he utters those words, he's like, you know, we can be a couple. But first, we need to go get you an AIDS test because you've <laughs> been around and you're not really a clean person. I I've seen your apartment. I've 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 had sex with you. Uh, right. Right. Which, thankfully, so I was gonna say <laughs> lots of condoms. Yeah, lots. Of, I mean, at least they were being safe. But now that this is past them, it's time to go get tested and figure out what each person has, and then we'll, you know, go forward from there when we're planning the babies. That exactly wasn't off of what I was saying. Phil was saying that about the previous movie with Jigsaw and Kevin McAllister. No, I think he was saying that exactly about the age. I think pop, we it should it take this out of context. Minute. John, <laughs> let this happen. <laughs> Obviously, um, Phil was talking about Home Alone. He was talking about Home Alone. <laughs> uh, but yeah. But anyway, so uh, so what are your closing thoughts again? Oh, I get them this time? Yes. Yeah, it's just yeah. topic. I think um, what had been really cool was if he was in the mental hospital mm -hmm. and they brainwashed him into – actually becoming Tyler Durden because he does kill that part of himself. Like he yeah. uses the gun, he shoots himself and like in his brain, he's like, my eyes are open, gets rid of that part of himself. But if he actually was in the mental hospital and they feed him drugs, they do this and that, they convince him because, you know, Fight Club had turned into multiple products that had infiltrated so much of society that if he was convinced to be Tyler Durden and lead them, then to see like, where they go from there, what kind of coups they throw, do they yeah, buy a yeah. the country? What goes on? Oh, I love that. Every time I talk, I hear feedback. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's it could be echoey. I don't know. Okay. Uh, anyway, um, I was oh uh Ted, yeah, there it is. Meatloaf. I mean, nobody really disagrees. I mean, who his name the, was Robert Paul like said Meatloaf. But yes, his name was Robert. His name was Robert. And he's buried out in the backyard. <laughs> I get it. In death, I we get... have names. <laughs> his name was Robert Paulson. <laughs> I... 
That part of the movie was so off. Uh, that was that was that, it, it that went was over. It was like I didn't expect it to go from like guy who hates his life to meeting badass guy to then going into a cult and then going into like vigilantism and property destruction. Like I saw this movie in the theater opening night and it, I was just glued. I was just like, oh my god, this keeps transitioning into like more cool shit. Like, oh man, yeah. great experience. Definitely. Uh, so let's uh, jump on to our next topic because we are running uh, short on, I mean, we're halfway through the show, but we still got a lot of topics to hit on. So let's jump into Ryan Hillsman's uh, What If. What if Ghostbusters lost to Gozer? Way better. <laughs> for me, I, it, for me I, I think it would be like an endgame thing. They'll have to do time traveling. They're going to have to save the other people, restore everything. Bill Murray would get the gauntlet, snap, and say, uh, you know, I'm Peter Bankman. And then it saves everybody. That's my thoughts. Interesting. It's, it, it's, it, it, everything is a vanity war at Endgame. If, if, it's a, if it's a cliffhanger loss movie, we got to get the Endgame. But if the Ghostbusters <laughs> to Gozer, doesn't that mean Stay Puff just literally destroys the world like Godzilla? That too. Yes, that too. Now, when he goes in the ocean to go over to Europe and conquer them, does he swell up like a marshmallow in hot chocolate? Or does he maintain his form because he was created by Gozer and he's perfect? That's a good question. I he's would... not perfect. He's a marshmallow. That, that <laughs> son of a bitch don't get puffy. But he has eyes and a mouth that move. Like, how is that happening? <laughs> yeah, I don't care how magical he is. He's a marshmallow. He going to get puffy. <laughs> get because he, he does stay puffy. And they're going to be like, oh, this one's from America. Look how big he got. <laughs> like, that's... All right. But I think the way it's... I think what happened was, is in <laughs> New York City, New York City, they had ghosts running rampant. But yeah. not all the way across the country. It was just New York City. Right. And then you would start to see that kind of spread out different yeah. places. They kind of get a little bigger. You'd stop stop seeing guns with bullets and more of these like lasery guns everywhere. It'd be wild west in it. People would be like, "Do you remember when we used to have peace?" And like, it would be this great apocalyptic movie where you'd have like just like gangs of people who are like trying to get by, and you're like, "That one's our leader. He's got the gun. Please protect me and the children." Like you'd have like these weird cults form, and you'd be like, "I think we should worship the ghosts. The ghosts are." It's supernatural, and they know better than us. They will take care of us. And they're, like, slime people and, like, messing with them. And, like, and so the ghost knew all. Like, it would be – that would have been way better. I would have loved to see that. So the ghost is over. Yeah. And then they migrate out to the rest of the world. Right, but humans are cockroaches. We always try to survive. So we're going to still be around. There's going to be pockets of us everywhere. People yeah, creating their own ghost just, traps, looking at them yeah. when they're not supposed to. But the thing is, is the more they kill of us, the more they get in their numbers. So they also want us to keep breeding a little ah, bit. Ah, I see where you're going there. That's it. That's it. Yeah, that'd be awesome. That is a good point. Let's, but here, let's bring up a few of the comments that we had right here. So, did we lose uh, the live feed? feed? What? Did we lose the live feed? No, we're still good. Okay, I must yeah. have got booted out of it on my phone. No, Trying you're all right. Out. Demo Ghostbusters would come in and save the day. Darth Gronick. Uh, let's see. The emergence of glucose-based life forms in the post-apocalyptic America. That's a good point. Yeah, there would be a lot more of them. It could be like Starro, like, you know, and, and constantly breed. There it is. Uh, Stay Bump turns into a giant McAllister. <laughs> oh, Whoa. Shit up. Hey, we're Actually, connecting now. There we go. Don't forget about the ghost blow job. Oh, that's yeah. true, Ted. You got a that's, whole business. You need a blowy, go to a ghost. She'll take care of it. That's what ectoplasm is, anyway. Oh, Can you go back in time right. to impregnate Kevin's mom <laughs> to save the future? <laughs> he brought all the. Don't forget, he blows up the credit buildings, too. I was going to say, he oh almost got God. all of them. He almost got all almost of them. every single one. That's right. impressive. He, if you guys knew who Brian Smelter was, you would be laughing 10 times more about this comment. That's hilarious. <laughs> wow. Good one, Brian. You got me oh you got me tearing up from laughter. Good job. Brian, if you could just tie – at the end of the show, if you could just tie all the movies together like yeah. that, that yeah. would really deeply appreciate that because that was hilarious, but I want it bigger now. <laughs> 
All right, anyway. Judge, let's move on to our next one. Yes, let's move on indeed. All right, so our next one that we got is from our good old friend, Bill Arendelle. If Anakin defeated Obi-Wan in Revenge of the Sith, for me, this would have been, I mean, this would have been scary. I mean, because, like, it, it would have. I mean, he would have already been taking, he would, okay, number one, if he were the one, we wouldn't have the badass suit. So that would be one downside. Is the uh, suit badass? I love, I love the Darth Vader suit. I love the Darth Vader it's suit. Like, it. What? Darth Vader yeah. hates his own suit because it was made to punish him. It's not comfortable. I, it causes him pain. Shit. It restricts his powers. I like it. Tough shit for him. I like it. <laughs> We're talking about Anakin, not, you know. I mean, I guess okay. he was Darth Vader at this time, but he became true, Darth true. Vader. I'm just being I'm being facetious towards him. All right, so I I think at this point a lot of hope would be would have been lost. Um, he would have got the kids. Uh, the kids would have been raised very weird and emo-y on that little Death Star. And uh, yeah, I, I think it would have been a really weird. It would have been a really weird. Maybe he sees the error of his ways when they're teenagers. Maybe. I don't know. I I, I disagree, Jesse, because. There were three people involved with getting these twins to safety. If Obi Wan is eliminated, then the other kid would just go to Yoda, and then the you know the the Alderanian king and queen I forget their damn names they would have still taken the girl because they always wanted a baby girl, and then oh, no. so then Yoda takes Luke and literally trains him from birth, so Luke is way stronger when it's his turn. Then nothing changes in the Empire. Darth Vader is the exact same person, does the exact same shit. He just doesn't have the suit on. That's the only difference. The, the, the only reason why the babies got into the hands of those people is because uh, Obi-Wan wins the fight and then flies a little uh, hello jet to the, uh, the OBMLG. Uh, sir, Yoda and the Alderaan guy were already on that ship when Obi-Wan docked with them, so they could come up with what to do with the kids on their own. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, so back up. Okay, so we're on, we're on uh, the, the planet... Where Anakin and and uh, Obi Wan fight, right? They fight, and then apparently she loses the will to live or whatever, and just. Oh, faints. Darth just made a comment about that. Put that up there. Darth just All said right. that. Good thinking, Darth. Oh, that's what I'm thinking. Does she yeah. die? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because he still betrays her. He's still evil, and he killed kids. So yes, Padme is still dying yeah, 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 from yeah. sadness, She's regardless of what. Yeah. yeah, he killed but, kids. Yeah. She's still dying. Yeah, we hold on to too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because he'd have his regular body and stuff. Yeah. Oh, God. Anakin hunts down Padme? Des, I like where you're going with that. That is pretty scary, actually. <laughs> it's, Brian, That's by like the way, the is accepting our challenge. We... <laughs> <laughs> it's like that Jennifer Lopez movie enough, but with space stuff. <laughs> I'm saying that if Anakin wins that fight, eventually Luke marries Leia. That's what I'm thinking happens. Whoa, whoa. Because they never find out their kid, their brother and sister. Yeah, I think like, there's a whole you know chain how, of events. You know how in some and states, and then they turn into some weird a, British royal family. Well, that's what I was thinking. Because in some states, you have to get a blood test before you get married. And if they did that test and found out they were brother and sister, would they still get married, or would they be like, "Oh, probably shouldn't have done that last night." <laughs> they wouldn't get a blood test because they don't have those in space. They got <laughs> giant things and stuff, but they don't have blood tests. Oh, they're no. not like advanced. Oh no! So, oh no! But they honey, tested what the Anakin we, we have the, the same Lord amount Lord. of midichlorians. <laughs> Yeah, now we get, into the, we get into the conundrum of midichlorians, which is a completely separate conversation for a different show. <laughs> I literally brought it in just to throw things off. Done uh, with the midichlorian. Okay. All right. Destroys the building before stabbing himself in the head. Give him a dual star oh. face. Ends up a... Oh, oh a fight yeah. club. He brought the fight club. Oh, he brought, he the brought them club. all together. He did. He brought them all together. Good job, Brian. <laughs> yeah, see, Darth called... Yeah, it's the midichlorian. So that's their charger. version of blood testing. There he is. All right. So... Uh, all right, let's move yep, on. Uh, do it. Our... Like, oh, you guys. It seems like you guys uh, are siblings. 
Let's move on to our next one. All right. So, okay, we did. Absolutely. Now, John. Oh. Jump into a James, uh, our second James Cameron movie of the night. Uh, What if Ripley killed the queen instead of shooting the eggs? John, take it away. Yeah, so uh, basically, we all know that in Aliens, Ripley encounters the Queen, and when she encounters the Queen, the Queen is tied up and attached to this anus-like egg sac thing that lays the eggs, and it can't really move. And she fucks around with it, like, oh, I'm going to burn your eggs. You know what this means. And then she calls off the little guards on the side. And then they start to walk away. But then the queen's like, "Uh uh-uh, you're not getting out of here. And she pops one of the eggs open. And Ripley just looks at the camera and gives this really annoyed look, like, what the fuck did you just do? And then she just wipes out all the eggs. This is the most inefficient way to handle this problem. Because clearly we know the queen breaks off of the anus egg sac chases them down, somehow hops aboard a plane that it's too big to fit inside the landing gear on, but we won't go into that, makes it up through space, into orbit, into the other space station, or the ship flying around, the Savako, and then they have this big fight, and it's all epic, and Bishop gets torn apart, but then she calls her a bitch, and she wins, and saves the day. Um, Fuck the eggs, just shoot the queen in front of you. Because those eggs aren't going to survive the nuclear blast that's about to happen in eight minutes. None of those aliens are going to be able to reach the minimum safe distance in that time. So they're all going to get wiped out. Just shoot the fucking queen. Because now you don't have any problems. So there's no queen to come up and start shit. There's no queen to rip Bishop apart. There's no queen to hide a hidden egg on the ship to then have Alien 3 in that terrible movie. Alien Resurrection never happens in that fucking horrible movie. So basically what happens is is her and Hicks start banging because they clearly like each other. It's even in a deleted scene where they exchange first names and they care about each other. And then somehow Ripley gets away with kidnapping Newt because abductions with children, I guess, aren't a punishable offense in this future. I mean, I'm pretty sure Newt had some extended family on Earth. Ripley didn't give a shit about that. She literally kidnapped that child, and everybody was okay with it. So, I'm okay with it. <laughs> I mean, look, this new ending is so much better, because now her and Hicks can pretend it's like their love child, and then they go on forever. He's scarred, so no other woman's going to want him. So, it boom, it's perfect. They're both damaged. They got this little kid that's damaged. And they live happily ever after with their fuck fest and their kidnapped child. Beautiful. Beautiful. Roll credits. And that's where we make the fucking money. Now, real quick. <laughs> now, real quick. Abductions don't exist in space. Ryan, <laughs> thank you for bringing in space law. We appreciate it. Space law. Space law. Uh, going back to one other thing. I want to put this comment up. It was our last movie. But uh, I, Phil, Phil brings up such a good point. Oh, man, what do you Only one doesn't yeah. drop off the kids. Vader suitless now kills Palpatine. And then Vader, his dad, his kids, as a Sith Trinity, and eventually Leia or Luke kills off the other because of the rule of My two. God, Phil, take this movie. I want to watch it right I now. I watched the shit out of that. <laughs> that. That was like, that's intense. Oh, that sounds so way better so much than the that. three sequel films we got. So let's make that movie <laughs> instead. Like, but that's a good. That, that was good. So all right. So uh, well, let me see. Uh, anybody else have any other comments about Alien? Right? Aliens? 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 Just anybody just Ryan's abduction that it doesn't count when you're in space. Good to know, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> It's good. Just in case I want to pilfage some kids from somewhere at school. Nobody cares. It's It's cool. That's why I want I want a t-shirt now that says abduction doesn't exist in space. Oh dude, perfect. And where is tag space law? Just where is hashtag space law? Jesse, here it is. When we get our at the grown-up shirts, it'll say that on the back. Abductions don't happen. What, what was it? Uh, abductions don't exist in space. We'll get that on the back of our shirt, and we'll have our logo on the front. There it is. <laughs> so I'm gonna look at that. And be like, what the fuck does that mean? Be like, you gotta watch this episode. And it'll make sense. Oh, um, oh, yeah. Jesus, we'll we'll, hook up, Ryan. Ryan. we'll, Ryan, we'll, we'll trademark it, and we'll give him a nickel every time somebody says it. <laughs> A whole nickel? Give them yeah. half a penny. Dude, those, those, those will add up over time, man. We're good. Yeah, that's why you give them a half a penny. That's like plays on Spotify. You don't actually <laughs> pay the artist. Are we better than the Spotify? Yeah, he only gets a penny. Sorry, Ryan. 
We just we have to treat you like we have to treat you like Spotify. That's what we gotta do. I don't make the rules. It's just the way things are in life. So life. <laughs> capitalism. Capitalism market indeed. value. It's already been set. It's already been set there. All right. So let's jump into our next topic. Uh, let's see. We got uh, Vance, the producer, man. What if Forrest Gump didn't have an AIDS baby? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'll I, think, I think we all need to agree that, yes, the kid is an AIDS baby and for some reason doesn't have AIDS. And Forrest Gump slept with Jenny, who had AIDS, and he didn't get AIDS. So she it doesn't make any sense. Huh? She, she slept with Forrest. Had the kid and then continued to sleep around till she got the AIDS. But they went out of their way to show her sharing needles and sleeping around with people before that to insinuate that's how she picked it up. And they never but, said it was AIDS, but everybody knows it's AIDS. It's not HIV. <laughs> people live through that. I can't believe it's, it's not AIDS. AIDS. People think, live through that. I think she just AIDS. got real lucky. And then when she had a kid, she was like, wow, this one year old's super annoying. Where's the hell? <laughs> <laughs> then she got the AIDS. Oh <laughs> actually, man, that actually tracks. Like I honestly <laughs> tracks. That is what he meant. It actually oh. tracks. Yeah, that's real tracks. Point. Yeah, that was yeah, just they, they he was making. Their feet now and in their eyes, like so you can't see it in the arm. Like they do tracks different places now that it's evolved. I'm sorry, I, I'm not as well aware of these drug habits as you, John. I'll, I'll do more. You're research not down on the time. new age train methods. It's cool. I'll fill you in later. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate no that. I got you. If we ever, if we ever get into heroin, we'll start doing it through the arms, and all the other people are like, "Look at this fucking noob." <laughs> You'll just have a heroin <laughs> We left you behind in like 2010. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Everybody knows you. Everybody doesn't want to talk to you. Look at this guy still uses his arm. Oh, I wonder why he wears long sleeves. Amateur. <laughs> he doesn't have any tattoos, so what's he hiding? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but mm -hmm. I have no druggy friends. Well, I mean, like I said, at the end of the day, um, I think uh, if Forrest Gump didn't end up, ha if I guess if Jenny would have just got healthy and didn't get AIDS and had a baby and. <laughs> And she lived, and the mother, and then they could have had a happy family together. And that's how I imagine it. And Forrest so, Gump, like, she, he'd be like bending her over the the big shrimp money uh, pile, banging her, and making more kids. That's like. Well, so do you think <laughs> if Jenny would have lived, she would have joined the '80s Jane Fonda sensation with the aerobics and and all of that? Like, would she have been oh, yeah, that kind of, of mom? Fuck yeah, of course she'd do that. <laughs> oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> All right, right. let's move on to our next one. We are slowly running out of time. All one, right, one second. On the last one, oh. he would have at least gone on. It would have made the movie a lot longer. He wouldn't have had, like, adult, like, responsibilities. Eventually, he becomes Steve Jobs by the end of the film. He oh, just keeps beautiful. doing different things. He's and he, origin story. Mm -hmm. Like, oh. he would go to space. He'd do a whole bunch of things. Like, he would just, you know, Steve Jobs just bossed around a bunch of nerds. I could see him doing that. I could see like, that. A whole bunch of things. He would have. They would have just cut gone. Okay. Yeah. I All love right. it. That's beautiful. What if Thor hit Thanos in the head in Infinity War? So the preface for those who live under a rock, uh, there's a scene where you almost think Thor defeats Thanos and prevents the staff by using Stormbreaker to to hit him, but he hits him in the chest instead of the uh, head, and then Thanos is like, "You should have gone for the head," and snaps, and then obviously the snap happens. So if this would. So if he went for the head, he would have prevented the snap. Mm -hmm. um, we wouldn't have had the biggest box office uh, film of all times until Avatar took it back over. Uh, you know, um, yeah. So, I mean, it would have been, it, it might have been better. If the world would have been better off um, for a little bit. I mean, we wouldn't have had, I think the only thing from this is we wouldn't have great sequels. I think you wouldn't have Captain Marvel either. You wouldn't have Captain we Marvel either. <laughs> The, the uh, yeah, Nick Fury would have never paged her because there would have been no reason to page her. Yep. He might have he might have hit her up at night and wanted a booty call here. And there. <laughs> oh, that's a, yeah, I feel like Captain Marvel is the only woman that could ever tame Nick Fury, so that just makes sense to me. On and off the set, on set apparently they were like texting each other, like, "Who are the Marvel people you can't stand?" <laughs> like they got in trouble for like texting each other, like, "Fuck that guy!" <laughs> like they. <laughs> <laughs> they're pretty cool with each other. Hence, so, yeah, hence, 
hits the head and it gets rolling. So uh, Ryan actually brings up a good point that that aligns with what something I wanted to say is that so when Thanos did his snap or the blip as they call it. Um, there was one corporation that rose above the rest and not only survived, but prospered. And that is Hallmark, because they now have a new global holiday called Ash Day, which Ash everybody Day. will buy a card for. So they are now in, still in business. They're number one. If <laughs> you don't have the snap, Hallmark does not become number one in terms of corporate entities. Their corporate office is no longer large enough to be viewable from space. And they don't dominate the world with all of their good feeling family oriented movies. No, no, no. Lori Lachlan, you are done. You are no longer going to be in these Hallmark movies because they don't exist because Hallmark goes out of business. Fuck you for taking that away from us, Thor. <laughs> yeah. But also no multiverse. No multiverse. Yeah, they yeah. don't got to go back in time. They don't create new timelines or anything. They don't start worrying about that. Loki Tony doesn't Stark get the lives. cube. I don't Why cry in the theater because Tony Stark lives. Because mm -hmm. I definitely yeah. cried when he died. I'm not afraid to admit it. It was very upset. Yeah, I cried like three times during that. That movie. was, that was, was crazy. Tough. It should have been tough. Captain America. I'm throwing it out there right now and forever. It should have been Captain America to die. Not, not Tony, but we won't get into that. It's a different yeah, topic. Well, I'll just say that for a different topic. But in other words, but yeah, like I said, I, we would have, like I said, the it would have ended right there. Um, also, one other thing, Tad Kevlin wouldn't have been invented, and uh, Steve Rogers wouldn't have just abandoned Bucky. It's like, yeah. he the line. But I got to go back in time and get some puss. <laughs> he didn't say it like that. He said it like that. You know what he said. He said he, he was waiting for him at that bench, you know. And then it was the end of his line. It was like, it was the end of Captain Rogers' line. Like, that's fine, you know? Yeah. I mean, he could hung around for his friend. He was like 100 years old. He's unstable. He doesn't know a world. You think He's like, gonna, I got no one I can relate to. You think they're going to die at the same time either way? Yeah. They got like, he's got some weird Russian off-brand superhero soldier serum, like, He's going to die way quicker than Cap. So, you okay, know. let me just say one thing. We spent like 10 movies listening to Steve bitch and moan about Bucky and how they were best friends and how he was going to save him and get him back and all of this just to then abandon him when yes. he needed the most to disappear and then come back as an old man like, oh, hey, by the way, I'm going to give this to the other guy and not you. Man, fuck <laughs> you, Captain America. You're the biggest piece of shit in that whole movie. Like, get out of here, man. You're done. Are you kidding me? Because here's the thing. Steve Rogers also was just like, Peggy, I'm so sad that I'm going to bang with somebody related to you. Like, he just, like, he was always hung up on Peggy, and even his rebound girl was related to Peggy. Exactly. Yeah, like, right, yeah. right. He just couldn't like, get away from that family. They just had, might have, must have had the magic box or something. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not neither here nor there. I don't know. I don't, you know, I'm not in, in, in the box, out of the box, no box, whatever. I'm not, I don't live in a box. I'm not homeless. I'm not thinking about the box. But what's the problem? Like, so Bucky, he saves Bucky. He saves Bucky from the horrible things that's been going on with him for many, many years, stops his brainwashing, gets him to a place, gets him a new arm, all sorts of things, stops the everything, gives him a new second chance on life. And then he's like, hey, if I give this shield to, to Falcon, I know Bucky will hang out with this dude. I know they're going to be good friends. Bucky's fine on his own. Bucky's fine. He's got his arm. No, He's got no, his no, 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 no. You don't, you're not friends with Captain America your whole life in order for the shield to be given to somebody else so you could be that guy's friend. Are you serious? Okay, who helped Captain America more? Bucky or Falcon? Even in Winter Soldier, it's Falcon helping him the whole way. Bucky's on ice in like a bunch of other movies. Like most of the time, it's a bunch of other movies. But like Captain America movies. doesn't need anybody's help. There's like so many, I can't list them. But like, <laughs> there you you got to say that the Falcon was the right person for the Shield, especially when you watch the new series. You go like, okay, like who he oh, is as a person, this and that. Yeah, so like you kind of like you know. If Bucky got the shield, he would still be like this quiet emo boy with the shield. He wouldn't be talking to America. He'd be like, I don't know, do whatever the fuck you want. I think you're America. Do just whatever. Like, my name's Bucky. 
I'm out of here. Yeah. He's, got that <laughs> What's he gonna do with the shield? he's gonna use it like a frisbee, and that's it. He's not gonna be like, I'll lead America. It's like he's just gonna be like, ah, yeah. Like, I'm gonna get emo girls to like me. Right. That's it. I think Bucky would have been a harder sell as the new Captain America in his defense. They're like at the first press conference, it's an honor to serve my country and I love being here. Did you kill Tony Stark's parents? Thank you and have a good night. And he walks off stage like Darth just dropped a pretty funny comment if you want to throw it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also that too. <laughs> this is a good point. The shield would have been a good redemption story. He's already we redeemed. Might get it. There's multiverse now, and, you know. So we still might get it. Okay, so oh, Jesse, we, we are running out of time. We still got to cover your movie, and we have to drop in what uh, Phil uh, dropped over. So I'll keep mine. I'll keep mine short. Go, so, Jesse. What Joker, so what if Joker escaped or lost in the Dark Knight? And I say lost because. Technically, he got everything they wanted. They just did a lie to block what uh, what Joker did. They lied about Harvey Dent and lied about him dying a hero. If he would, if everyone had known he died a villain, it would have undo done everything. You know what I mean? So in this case, what if the Joker got captured? I think they would have gone down. They would have kind of done the sequel they wanted to do, which was the Long Halloween style, where Joker would actually end up throwing the acid into Harvey's face to make him officially into Two-Face. Like, he would throw it on the plastic surgery and it hurt him. So I think that would have happened. Um, we would have had Joker be a great side villain, which, in my opinion, Joker is always great as a side villain in, in the fact that he is good. Like, there would be this main problem, and Joker is constantly screwing it up for Batman. One of the greatest storylines is Arkham, uh, Arkham City, where Batman is trying to stop this genocidal prison from uh, killing a bunch of people. But Joker's like, I'm dying of a of deadly poison. I'm going to inject you, so now you have to figure out the cure to save me. And if not, I donated my blood to a bunch of hospitals over the week, so whatever. <laughs> so, I mean, it totally sidetracks everything. And I think that would have been a very interesting Joker to see, you know, a Joker that can sidetrack Batman, which is chaos, which is yeah. what he yeah. does with chaos. I mean, so that, that's what I thought would have happened if they would have been able to if Joker would have escaped and or lost and went on trial and he would have to find another way to corrupt or cause chaos. Look, man, any movie that isn't afraid to kill the fake Katie Holmes, I get it. So I'm all about it. So <laughs> I really, really like this idea where you're going, Jesse. This is beautiful. Yes. And they talked about actually doing that for the yes. next movie. Problem was Heath Ledger died, obviously. Yes. Yeah. Um, and they they were just they said like they will never recast. But just like they showed Scarecrow do like holding court, they were gonna yeah. have Joker yeah. in like this whole like I love destroyed it. town, just like no, it. It. havoc, just having fun. I love it. Like, and that would have been I think that would have been great. So I think if he escaped, much better story. Because like, yes. you just have him doing adding in, like you were saying. To this already hectic time, he's like, "I've got to beat Bane. My back's broken." Yeah. Joker's like, "Ha ha ha! Now your ankle, like something." <laughs> I, I, yeah. So I think, I think having Joker, and again, I think Joker, while he can be an amazing and evil villain at at the forefront, when he's the side villain, I think at times he can be way more evil, way more evil at times. Except in. <laughs> Justice League, where he makes that weird dying seal laugh. Ah, 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 ah. Like, what are you doing? Let's let's not talk about that. Let's no, say, no, <laughs> too much talk about Jared Leto let's, these days. Talk about it more, because Jesse just loves the Snyder Cut. Look he's at him looking away. Cold. He's, he's not just, even like looking at me right now. He's so mad. I I Listen, if I had to point out one bad thing about the Snyder Cut, again, I fucking love the four-hour movie. So I would like you to talk. I was going to talk about it for this show, and I because I had my what if for that one. We'll but do it the next what if show. We'll do it for the next one. But yeah, the only thing I did not like was and Jared Leto. He, he he was he was more tolerable. But for me, I'm just like that seal laugh. That ah, 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 ah. Like, what are you doing, man? You took as we said on the last show. Like. All right, so, the last show. He worked really hard to have that, and then yeah. Anyways, we got to wrap. We got to wrap. So what's what? the uh, what's the topic that uh? One more, one more that our friend Phil Moore brought up, and that is 
Back to the Future. What happens if Marty fucks his 50s hot mom because he didn't realize that was his mom because his brain was still messed up from getting hit by the car? Well, then Marty uh. gets raised to take on the robot rebellion. <laughs> <laughs> actually, he's got a point. He's actually got a point. So, so Marty is the one who was the original leader of the resistance, and he is responsible for sending Kyle back to change that to then John Connor. Got it. That actually tracks. Like, that it almost, does. Like, it really does. <laughs> it really tracks, because then in that case... They have to fix the bloodline and then send oh. Kyle Reese back. That makes sense. I'm totally for it. I don't even think that's a joke. I think that's brilliant. Oh, man, that's hilarious. That was you great, see- Bill. Okay, Brian has it for us. So are, are you ready? Okay, here we go. Let's see All it. All right. Let's see. Bankman would go back in time to impregnate Kevin's mom before Ripley get killed her before the birth, but then his mom gets hate. <laughs> Space Spice would bait her, who goes crazy and destroys buildings after stabbing himself in the face, ending up in an Alderaan mental hospital where he meets Joker. I, 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 I mean, that's be- Ryan. Th- th- Brian, that's 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 beautiful, man. Like, I feel like this is a script in the works now. Like, that's just fucking amazing. Let's make a movie about blending all the movies we love together. I love this concept. What a beautiful lawsuit that will be. Oh, <laughs> We'll, we'll, we'll pay people. It's cool. <laughs> we'll give them like pennies. It'll be yeah, yeah, pennies on the, We'll just that's what we'll do. Oh, he's taking a bow as you should, as you should. <laughs> Mic drop right there. there. It is. Exactly. <laughs> all right. Well, hey, that's all the time we have for today's show. I want to thank everybody that tuned in. I, I want to thank Ty Brunetti, our guest. Everybody, let's give him an applause right there. Yeah. I want to thank Ted Wood. I want to thank Darth. I want to thank Phil, Phil Moore. I want to thank uh, Nigel for and Joshua for lighting up. Oh, Desiree as well and Brian. Uh, let's see. Am I missing anybody? I want to thank you all for lighting up the comment section. You guys are thank heroes you. in our books. Thank you so much. I want to thank all the people who made excellent suggestions for movies. Uh, I want to thank Let's see, Keith, Josh, Ryan, Bill, uh, Vance, the producer, the producers of the goods, who also produced this show, uh, Darth, again, for uh, suggesting it. And thank you so much. Again, the show will be on YouTube to watch. So go on our YouTube, like, subscribe, share our videos, check out past episodes. And uh, like I said, if you want to find Ty Bernetti, you can go find him anywhere on – where are some of your handles? Uh, at TYB Comedy on anything. There you have it. There you go. There you go. Uh, and just to whore myself out real fast, uh, I will be does. at Cafe Kerouac uh, this Friday, 8 p.m. Columbus, Ohio. And then yeah, him and I will be uh, in Newark, Ohio for the roast of Thanos. Uh, we're going to be roasting Thanos. I will be uh, Star-Lord, and he will be Spider-Man. Oh, so that's God, that's going to be great. Produced by Dustin Richardson, so expect videos for that, and I'll play a video on the show one of these days. And last but not least, i got to remember to start plugging this because October 1st is the release date of my comedy special. It'll be released uh, on jessepimpinell.com. It will only be for $5 on there. $5. And uh, yeah, $5 special. It's actually <laughs> hot mess. Watch you get sued. <laughs> it's called The Hot Mess. And I want to make it, by the way, you two are actually thanked in the credits. Oh, um, yes. So I got, did nothing. Don't you, give me credit. You'd be for, surprised. I, I can no. tell stories of what you two have done for me. So, and, and I'm hoping Mostly we, shaming him. That could, that counts. <laughs> that counts. But anyways, thank you so much for tuning thank in, everybody. Uh, again, oh, I, I want to make one last thing. One last thing. Just want to make sure. Uh, I thanked uh, – oh, yeah, I did thank Vance. I forgot I did that yeah. out of order. <laughs> Vance for producing the goods. But anyways, catch us next week, man. We're so excited to always be here Wednesdays live on Facebook. And until then, I'm Jesse. And I'm John. And you've been sitting at the grown-ups table. Thank you, and have a killer Wednesday evening, everybody. Take it easy. I don't have an ending line. Yeah.